Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we have another opportunity to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. So this week we're acknowledging my tribute to BKS Angar. We'll be back to him many times in the future. Uh, like many of us, circumstances that we didn't choose propelled us into yoga. We got injured, we got stressed, we wanted to calm our mind, we're on the spiritual search. And uh, doing a few poses doesn't really grip you in the art of yoga, and especially for those of us who are teachers, not in the art of teaching either. But you understand at some point, what's the use of reading books if you don't understand who you are? So even if there's a half-hearted effort at the beginning, and we're immature, and we don't devote a lot of time to yoga, at a certain point, if you're going to revolutionize your practice, um, you have to make it your lifestyle. So, of course, one of the great things that I learned from Mr. Iyengar is alignment, how important it is to find the center, the plumb line of the body, as I mentioned yesterday, waken your brain from hibernation. But the asanas, of course, are not just physical. They're spiritual, they're iconographic. And when you find the center, the median plane in your body, God is the median plane, as Mr. Engel would say, you find out how not to overstretch, understretch. There's this balancing act that goes on between front and back, top and bottom, center and sides, and so forth. The skin becomes not just an anatomical organ, but an organ of perception. It's your nervous system turned inside out. Another important thing that I picked up from him is the importance of the diaphragm as the mediator between the physical and the spiritual body. Of course, a lot of people understand it has to do with the breathing apparatus, which normally is happening automated. You don't have to think about it when you're not paying attention, when you're sleeping, when you're preoccupied. But you can take it over in pranayama, control the breath, and shift your, your mental state. And this is science. So this is where a lot of energy is. It's a fear center also. When you grip it, you pant and you wheeze. And when it's free, your breath is relaxed and easy. So you understand, and this is his main thing, when I say hit the mat is my reductionistic way of saying perseverance is the key. Right? Success comes to one who practices, not to one who practices not, as it says in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. So without disciplining yourself, and I don't mean here disciplining like in a rote way, following till you're numb. I mean loving learning. That's what disciplina really means. So you don't want your intellectual system eaten away by too much thinking and brooding, splitting your head and your heart. Yoga doesn't eat things away. It supplies. It balances. It heals. And then you complete, completely feel refreshed, especially if you learn to do a head-down position like Sirsasana headstand or one where there's peace and poise in your body by doing Setubanda, where all that blood circulates in the chest, the heart, and then the throat. So we use our pranayama. Another thing he said, the nerves are like the unconscious aspect of your own mind. And you soothe them, you calm them, you stimulate them appropriately with your pranayama practice. And of course, it's not like you can't do any wrong. Wrong practice can create complications, and disturbances, whereas right practice has such a soothing and healing quality to you. Now, most of us don't understand his other real bold statement that pain is a guru that comes to challenge you. And for most people, if they get a little pain, they just run away. But one of the things I learned from him is once the pain begins, that's where your logic commences at that moment. You have to find out, why does it feel this way? How come it doesn't feel like that on the other side? What am I doing or not doing that could correct it? So... From that, what you learn is to be very open and not have an aim at all, even though yoga seems to be taking you towards an end. But one of the things I learned from him was to try to bring people in a shorter amount of time than it took him. And so his apparent aggression or rajasic nature is really his desire for people not to waste the time, as he did, till he learned to find out for himself. So I hope you all ignite the fire of further interest in yoga. Because the more you do, the brighter the flame of yoga burns. And when you know how to do this appropriately, it'll revolutionize your life. So may you all have confidence that you can do it yourself. May you all have clarity so that you see, 
without distortion what you know. May you all have compassion. May you feel for others what they're going through and serve them to alleviate their pain to the extent that you can. May you find through your yoga practice your cleverness, how to be innovative and bring variety and diversity into what you do. And then always to have courage, to be bold, to live in your heart and appeal to the heart of other people. Ignite that fire.